You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a friend to the room. Our, our, our bloke from the UK. Our bloke. Is Ed here. Sheeran. Ed Sheeran is here. Bloke's not a bad word, right? Nah, bloke's oh, okay. a good word, yeah. Okay. Bloke's a good word. Are we going to do a shot now? Uh, Ed, you talking my language. Oh, my goodness. As Charlemagne <laughs> gets the liquor ready. Drink. As Charlemagne drink gets the liquor in. ready. What you want? You want cognac? Can we get I some cups? I want to... Uh, wait, have you got your own drink, Envy? Wait, what the... No, the, no, no. The no, one that says Envy. No, no, right. no. That's uh, that's actually 50 drink effing vodka. That's vodka. Ah. That's vodka. Now, Sweet. we seen Ed Sheeran at the iHeartRadio Awards, and we took a picture with him, but Angela Yee actually cropped my face out. Yeah, Did you no, see the picture? I, I noticed that. I yeah, noticed she, that, she, yeah. She, cropped me out. she just wanted to make it seem like you guys were on the date. But you killed the iHeartRadio Awards, and Thank congratulations you, on your award. Thank you. How was that show for you? Uh, do you know what? It was, uh, American award shows, they, they usually always sit you like in a line, and it's quite awkward, because if you want to say hi to an artist, you have to like get up, walk in front of loads of other artists, and right. be like, hi, I'm a fan, but uh, on foot, on... The Our Heart Radio Awards, they put you on a table with other artists so you can kind cool. of chat to people you don't really usually meet. Yeah, that, that was cool. pretty cool. Now, we, we listened to some of your... Oh, whiskey, Hello. baby. Yes. Whiskey. I know what you like, eh? I'm in. I'm in. Let's <laughs> do it. We got cups? We got yeah, yeah, cups? Yeah. I listen to your music. I know what you like. Let's do it. Now, we were listening to your album this morning, and your album felt a lot like um, soca music, some of the songs on there. So, soca music? Soca music. Yeah. Did, did you get any inspiration from the from the islands of the Caribbean? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think... I think most music now is. Uh, I think most music uh, f forever has been inspired by um, island culture. I think, yeah. But I did spend some time in in, in Ghana. I went over to Ghana for about three weeks and um, uh, collaborated with an artist over there called Fuse ODG. And he uh, he's a very very talented Afrobeat artist. And he kind of had a house that's just full of amazing Afrobeat artists as well. So we 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 created some music out there as well, which was good. That sounded good. It sounded like yeah, like Toast Copa to Divide. Music. Are we shotting it or, or just... It's up to you. I don't know. Fuck it. I'm not really let's, a whiskey guy. Let's shot it. You shot, shot it? it? Yeah. Check mm. Charlemagne to make sure he drank his. Did you ah, drink his? Well. Ah. All right. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Ah. Yeah. That, that might have to be our last <laughs> one. <laughs> What's a good whiskey, Ed? Uh, Bushmills. Bushmills? Bushmills. Bushmills, yeah. I don't know what this is. You ever heard of this? Bu yeah. Yeah, American whiskey's good, but I'm, I always go for Irish or Northern Irish whiskey. You know, one thing I like about you, man, uh, your, your, your records, right? Like, it, you're unapologetically UK. Yeah. Like the song, uh, what's it, Galloway Girl? Did I pronounce that right? Oh, that's Irish, though. That's Galway. Irish. Okay. Galway's a town in um, Ireland. There's actually another, there's a Steve Earle song called Galway Girl, actually. Okay. And as I, as I was writing the song, I was like, I can't call it Galway Girl because Steve Earle sings the song Galway Girl. So I've kind of like, I think I've stepped on his toes there a little bit. Does the label ever press you? Like, make a record about Times Square, Ed. <laughs> about you're, you're, big, you're big in the U.S. too. No, do you know what? They I, they told me not to put on Galway Girl, though, because they said folk music wasn't cool, but mm. something's only not cool until you make it cool, mm -hmm. I think. yeah. Now, why the name of the album Divide? Uh, I wanted to create an album that every single song was completely different, so when you skip to the next track, it's just like a complete shift. Mm -hmm. um, so it was 12 tracks that were very divided, basically. Now, on, on the song Erasure... You talk a lot about Satan tempting you. What, what, yeah. what, what are those temptations? I think it's just, any, like, if you ask any musician, mm -hmm. the mu music industry and film industry and probably art industry, just like those worlds, I mean, m much like business, I think just there's temptations that are there, whether it be drink, whether it be drugs, whether it be girls, that have, you know, they're, they're, they're always there. And uh, you have to kind of, li literally, the, I, I say in the song, uh, every day, uh, um, Satan tempts me. I try to take it in my stride, and mm -hmm. you just you, you 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 see it all the time. And there'll be times when you it looks quite attractive, and you might wander over to it for a bit, and then you just have to kind of remind yourself that it's not the right thing to do. Do you mean like a woman or just, just like... any any of the above? Okay. Like drink, drugs, women. Do, do you really believe fame is hell? No, it was you know I I kind of had that that line in there, and that, then I quickly wrote nobody wants to see you down in the dumps because you live in your dream. The shit should be fun. Exactly. So like I kind of it was a line where you know in my in my home country, um, and you know in some places in America it is quite hard to go outside and just go and get like a pint of milk from the shop or something like mm -hmm. that. So that was kind of me no, aiming. Only when you're a big star like Ed Sheeran. There's yeah. plenty of artists who can walk out and get milk. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and nobody will but does bother fame, him. Does your fame bother you? No, no, because, you know, it, it, it allows me to really do a job that I love, but there are certain 
instances where you know nothing is perfect in life and you can't have like the perfect career or the perfect relationship or like the perfect friendship there's always things that are wrong with it and um uh with fame there's certain things that i would take out but then if i took them out i wouldn't have the success i had so exactly. you just have to find the balance my, my, my most of that song was me writing about finding the balance like i kind of like had a whirlwind success for five years and then didn't really know how uh I was kind of like going to sort my life out and which friends I could trust and where I should live and like if if my family were like all right and should I be going on tour here or should I be releasing song here and taking a year out of that and just balancing it all out and now I'm kind of cool. But what makes you so grounded? Like, you know, we meet a lot of artists and a lot of pop stars and, and huge stars, but you're probably one of the artists that you're the same Ed every time we see you. You know what I mean? Whether it's you, you come over to say hello or you just joke and laugh. What makes you so grounded? Um, do you know what? I come from a very, very, very small town in the middle of nowhere in in Suffolk, in England. And oh Jesus, what's that? Do you, you like little Boosie? Yeah. Okay, this is his liquor. I've never right. tried it, so I figured Boosie juice, right? Yeah, since um, you're here, and we've but, never tried it, we're gonna try it. But, but yo, I, continue. Uh, I uh, no, I come from a very small town. I've got a friendship group of twelve mates, mm -hmm. and that's like my and my, my girlfriend's one of that friendship group that we all grew up with, and we've all known each other since since we were ten. And I think there's a you can kind of go back to that town and there's a veil that's taken off you. Mm -hmm. And no no one says, how's your career going? Have you met this person? What's this person like? They just go, mate, do you want a pint? Uh, So-and-so has been up to this. Oh, have you heard Thingy slept with Thingy? Like, it's just right. like, you know, it's a very, very still normal. still gossiping? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, it, it, one of my mates hooked up with another one of my mates' little sisters the other day, and that was like as, as soon as we got back, it's like, dude, did you Fuck hear this? You know? <laughs> exactly. Like, it wasn't like it wasn't like oh, you've been at the iHeart Awards, and I saw you at a table with so and so and so and so. It just goes straight back to how we were at school. But well, that's what Castle to... on the Hill represents, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah precisely. Yeah. You know what I wanted to know? Khaled talks about an experience with you and him in Miami. Oh god. <laughs> Where you go from club to club to club to club to club and then go to the studio. Tell us about that experience. I'm, be honest, that. So I'm a little upset that. that we haven't hit the clubs, man. We've supposed to been hit the clubs no, I know. together, man. I know. Well, at least I've, the bars. Well, do, do you know what? Oh. Do you know what the thing is uh with with New York? Every time I'm in New York, I'm up doing breakfast radio stuff like this. It's and, called uh, morning radio, <laughs> not breakfast radio. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus but, Christ. With 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 Canada in Miami, I had the whole day off the next day, so we really really hit it hard. But we, uh, I t I took him to a dive bar first. I'm not drinking no much, boy, man. Oh, come on, man. It's it's right. Come All on, right. his arms out, yeah. man. It's little Boosie's drink. Come on, it's little Boosie. It's okay. little Boosie juice. Salute to little Boosie. Boosie juice. Man, Boosie juice. Boosie juice. Okay, so so you and Khaled and the club. I got a day of interviews after this. We're gonna Ow. shot. We're gonna shot Ow. this. Have you shot Ow. it? Or just yeah, I did. I was not that dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my that god. That good, okay. Tell us oh. about Khaled. Now you're in Miami, you're going to the club. Oh. That's better than the whiskey. <laughs> you think so? Boosie, I respect that. That's all right. Ah. Um so I took him to a dive oh, yeah, bar. Way better than the whiskey. Go ahead. I'd, I I <laughs> yeah, no. You got a shot it, man. Yeah, no. You want me to take the whole yeah, shot? Yeah, oh, I want you to take the god. whole shot. Jesus. We're in it together. Um I I took Ow. I took him to <laughs> I took him to a dive bar and we played some pool. Okay. Um all right. and uh Ooh. you know, chatted. And then he he was with in his uh you know his Rolls Royce. His wraith, uh -huh. Is it a wraith, a wraith with the with the sparkly things yeah, on the yeah, top? Wraith, yeah, something yeah. named yeah. after a spirit, a phantom, <laughs> it's a ghost. Wraith, it's a wraith. So uh, uh yeah, and then he was like, we're gonna go to one of like his clubs now. So we turned up at this hip hop club, and I think Jeezy was there, and Flo Rider, and someone else. So we stayed there, and then we hit another club, and then hit another club, and then hit another club. And like I'm kind of like Khaled. Khaled's very reserved. Khaled's very like he's you never see him get messy. He's always right. like. He's, you'll always see him with a bottle of champagne in his hand, but he's not Never like drinking it right. Well, he's not shotting it. He's not like proper drinking it. I, I don't really know what what his alcohol intake is, but right. Um, and then we get to the studio, and I've kind of like I have Irish blood in me, so I'm just like drink, 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 and it's all free booze as well. And we get to the um, studio, and I think like there's just a, a, a lot of people about, and I'm kind of like. Uh, chain smoking roll up cigarettes I'd roll smoke roll smoke roll smoke and he does call that smoking blunts Ed. you were smoking no, weed no 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 he said cigarettes like, no tobacco people roll up tobacco in england you do okay in england you, gotcha. you that that's what you grow up doing um and uh yeah i kind of and he <laughs> that's doesn't call and he doesn't yeah <laughs> it is and he doesn't fag. smoke he doesn't smoke <laughs> cigarettes so i've kind of like hot box his whole room with uh -huh. tobacco and i play him like 50 songs off off the new album and then leave at like five o'clock in the morning 
And uh, yeah, it didn't didn't I kind of like had that fear the next day we woke up and we were like you were like was I a bit of an egotistical maniac yesterday? Now we know how Cali gets free features. He gets his guy, he gets, <laughs> he gets, him, drunk. He gets him drunk, and gets him to the studio. Do you know what I would do? I I, I would really like. Do you remember the, uh, he did a song with Akon, John Legend, and Anthony Hamilton mm-hmm. with Jada Kiss, Scarface, and someone else? I'd love to be like one. Five second feature, feature on Cal- and I'd love to get Have Khaled. Have you told him that? Yeah, of course. Okay. But and, and I'd love to get Khaled on like one of my really, really slow, gentle acoustic songs, being like DJ Khaled, <laughs> we the best. But just like a really, really, <laughs> right, really right, gentle right. song. Yeah. Now, now, now you talk about a few of your friends on this album. None of them seem to be doing good. You said one of your mates. I think you said he 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 died. Of, her his his mate died of an overdose. Yeah. And then you yeah. said another one. His second. He's on his second wife. Mm. Like, is it difficult to still be friends with them because you're such a No, I think it's, do you know what's weird about my mates is we have the literally nothing in common other than the place that we came from. Mm-hmm. And we still have so much to talk about and we get on so well. And I think that's the case. I reckon you have, you obviously, I know you as a person and I know, I know you as a person. And you have industry mates that you hang out with, right. but you have your, you have your friends. Yeah, you you absolutely. have your friends who like have nothing to do with the industry, who might be like, a steel worker or work in a bar or work on Wall Street or like do do anything and they'll hang out with you in a bar and the last thing they want to hear about is who you've interviewed on the radio. They just want to hear like if you're dating anyone or like what They want to know alcohol. if I've fucked some celebrities. Do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you fucked some celebrities? In my life? Yeah. Yeah, before I'm married now, but yeah, I have. Which so ones? Before- so yeah, right. You, yeah. Mate, <laughs> mate, you, you think put, I've had that much to drink? You put, you put, you put, <laughs> ev- <laughs> you put everyone on blast in our chair. We're putting you yeah, on blast now. Chair. And you know what you should do when you get put have on you blast? Ever, have you ever sucked a fart out of... A celebrity's butt. A celebrity's butt. No, I've never eaten another celebrity's ass. I wouldn't have done that. That's something you reserve. You keep for the wife. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you only eat your wife's ass. Do you know what's so bad about our first interview? My dad watches all the interviews I did, and the first thing we <laughs> talked about was sucking farts out of butt. Really? Um, yeah, and I got home, and I was just kind of like, you're right, dad? And he was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how do you think you got here, boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Now, you also said you find, you find, you find comfort in pain. No, the um the the line is I find comfort in my pain eraser. So a pain eraser is for me w- w- when I was writing the song, I knew I, I knew people would kind of take this different ways, but I think a pain eraser is anything from music to food mm-hmm. to good company to the negative stuff like bad women, drugs and booze. I think a pain eraser is anything that kind of distracts you from pain. So that song was basically I find comfort in my pain eraser, which could be like l- literally anything. One one of my favorite records, um, because it reminded me, like I, I always like rappers like Nas, right? Like when Nas would rap from the perspective of a gun, mm-hmm. like that was just different. You did a song from the perspective of your grandfather. Yeah, I thought that was ill, and it's it's, it's titled after your grandmother, Nancy. Mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what made you want to do that? Do you know what? It's a it's it's the weirdest story because it's not it's now not like Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland now. It's all it's all very calm, and it's all like you know calm calm down and my grandmother was from southern ireland and was a catholic and my grandfather was from northern ireland and was a protestant and when they started dating it was literally like west side story two sides can't mix both families were like this can't fucking happen and uh a protestant from belfast married a catholic from wexford and they snuck off and did it in secret my grandfather took all the gold teeth from his dentist practice that he was working at melted it all down into gold ring married my grandmother and I just thought I just thought it was the most amazing story and it just has to have a song written about it that was where, where it kind of came from no that's interesting because I like you know I got my book coming out and like I realized I didn't really know about a lot about how even my parents met mm. you know I don't know either yeah I never really I asked, never thought but, about it yeah yeah yeah. so it was, I just thought it was dope that you even went past the parents and went to your well my gra- like I I you know I'm I, I am a UK citizen I am British but my family is very, very, very much rooted in Ireland. And my grandmother, uh, who is Irish, we have this sort of, we, we all go over there like four or five times a year and, and visit her. And we always hear the stories about it. And you, it's, uh, and my granddad only just passed away recently and he'd have stories for days about it as well. And we, it was just a kind of tale that we grew up with. And I, I actually wrote the song with my cousin. Mm-hmm. And we were, we, were, we were in the studio and we were kind of, jamming out this folk song that we're trying to make an the Irish tune and he was like, well, let's just write about grandma and granddad because they have this fucking amazing story that mm-hmm. no one really knows about. Now, now, Supermarket Flowers, that's about your mom, right? 
Yeah, well, that's about my mum's mum, so my other grandmother, but it's written from my mum's perspective. Oh, okay, because I couldn't just see. I was confused because I was like, is, I couldn't tell if his mum. No, it away, was or? it was my grandmother. I went so, so I went traveling last year, and my grandmother got very sick when I was traveling. So me and Cherry both flew flew home, and I built a studio in my house, and we recorded my album from my home to be near my grandmother, who was in hospital, like probably like ten miles away. So I was visiting her every single day. And then one of the days that we were in the studio recording, she passed away. And that song basically, we I found out and I was like, I don't know how to fucking handle this. Let's just write a song. That's the best way to get, you know, emotion out. Um, and the way that I thought of writing was writing it from my mum's perspective. Because mm-hmm. my mum, she's like, she only has my grandmother and my grandfather and they're like the only two apart from me and my brother and my my dad they're the only like two people in her life so it was like a really really big deal for her so to write a um a song about that from her perspective was the kind of goal why supermarket flowers though do you know what it's You're a cheap bath today. no but do you know if, <laughs> if you go if you go to any hospital in england and visit your grandmother it's always supermarket you will always go there's we have a shop called tesco which would be like walmart or target or something right. and it's always tesco flowers you always buy tesco flowers to go and visit someone the cheap roses mm-hmm. the cheap flowers yeah well no because it's like right always right next to the hospital you always go right. tesco they're buy half flowers. dead they die in a day yeah, yeah, but it was die in a day. but it was uh it was a a, a song i wanted to write about lich literally the the most basic things you can do so the lyrics are i took the supermarket flowers from the window sill i pulled the tea from the cup i packed up the photo albums that my brother had made and you know it was all like specific things that we had done so Which i didn't you- want to be like i took the 40 dollar flowers that we bought from the florists down the road it, they were literally yeah. tesco flowers now with all your success what 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 do you splurge on i, I see your, your your paddock on your in your wrist like what do you buy what what makes you happy what are the things that you just <laughs> recklessly buy uh i've you know i i started being a watch guy very very early on it was john john mayer that ruined my life that put you on the watches <laughs> i mean yeah. how much money have you spent in watches Ed? uh too much how but... many watches do you have no. he covered up his wrist <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> about about 14 about 14, 14. Watches. 14 yeah but they're like specific ones watches um, are good though because they don't depreciate with value Some yeah yeah and i you know and they're if you get if you get the right one you can really like they're, they're nice things to look at um i do you know what i bought i bought uh <laughs> the most the most wild thing i've done i think have you ever paid for a kitchen to be made yes paid for a kitchen what, to be made. i mean kitchen for my basement to be made, made kitchens, yes. kitchens are well. Worse than houses, so I, I just I just paid for a kitchen to be made. I'm doing what do you mean it's worse than houses? It's like a bloody hell, man! Like yes. pay for a kitchen. I'm paying for it's, my basement. I'm getting a basement. Kitchen. Nah, a, but no, a base basement's different. When you get like cookers and fan extractors, and absolutely, my wife is killing me right now. Yeah, like so it's uh, so that was the um, yeah that uh, I guess. Do you know what I <laughs> I did a thing when I first uh, when I first learned to drive? I was like obsessed with James Bond obviously and I was like I'll buy an Aston, an Aston Martin and I bought an Aston Martin and the first day I sat in it I was like yeah and then I drove through my hometown and I was like oh, I look like such a yeah, prick and, and, I have, and I haven't you felt, like a, you felt like a prick such a prick and I haven't driven it since Never it's just it's just I, I gave I gave it to my manager's wife for a bit and just let him let let, let her take it for like six months but did you realize that like everything are you alright with this yeah please Ed, help me out you see Uncle Charlotte over here struggling I'm with the damn bottle open up mix. goodness gracious no I'm just saying we, I, I don't drink like that you know that oh, he, but Ed's my it, guy it doesn't look like it I'm just trying all the stuff we never drink. This is a uh, look at this is Martel. Can you, can you take it easy on the shots though? Yeah, no, right. This is a splash. Tell this me when to stop. 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 And then and then, right. then you have, let's let us all do shots. I've got all interviews right. after this as well. Yeah. Oh, my oh shit! Now we're gonna get you drunk and you're gonna go over there and cry. You're probably, <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody will think they're doing such a great job interviewing Ed. Don't we realize did, we it. We did exactly. Who yeah, are you going man. to? Tell us who you're going to. Uh, I'm doing phoners. Do you know what? Oh, okay, this is the cool. thing. I, I I hope you know this is how much that oh, I how much that I love and appreciate you guys. Every time that I'm like I want to go into the Breakfast Club and do an interview, the label go to do that to keep every other station happy. You need to do like 14, 15 interviews. So anytime I come on the show, I need to do another 14, 15. Well, we, appreciate we appreciate you. you, we love you, you we appreciate you, right. man. That toast. Shot we love you. Toast, toast. Now, now, uh, venting must be hard yeah, on, because because like you said, yeah. Like you it's said, a bit nobody... awkward on film, innit? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be like, Ed was standing there like this, waiting for Emmy. <laughs> like you said, nobody wants to hear a star complain. So, who do you talk to? Um, 
You don't really. You don't really. I, I think. I think that's why so many stars have addiction problems because there's mm. no. There's you can't complain to mm. anyone. Even even to other stars. You can imagine if like Justin Bieber like went to Justin Timberlake and was like. I don't, I, I don't think this is going well. Justin Timberlake's first thing would be like, "Dude, you're smashing it! It's going so well!" And it would all be like a positive thing. But I think, I think that's why so many people end up sort of going down the other road because there's no, there's no one to really talk to. So you just spend a lot of time with yourself. But I think being honest, op- open and honest, and finding people that if I, if I say to my friends, "Oh, this sucks," like you can be like, "Oh, I did this amazing show." But I came off stage afterwards and it was just me and an air conditioner. I felt really bad about it afterwards. Your friends, instead of being like, oh, but you got paid this amount for the show. It must have been amazing. Can be like, oh, that, you know, let's talk about that. And I think that's how it sort of helps through. Is that why you took a break? Because, I I mean, I always find that intriguing that you literally posted that you're going to take a break. And you really did. And you took a year break. Mm -hmm. I even hit you up during that time just Mm -hmm. to see, where is he at? Is he alive? (laughs) Like, you know, all right? No, I, my... I, again, I think life is all about balance and it's all about finding the right sort of balance. And for me, I was like constantly inundated with requests. So I'd wake up every morning with like 50 texts on my phone asking for things, not being like, how how are you? It'd just be like, can you do this? Can you do this for my sister? Can you play this wedding? Can you can you pay for this? And it, it was just like, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all happy to do that. But it was just getting to a point where it was a bit too much. So I, right. so I sort of cut it back, went traveling, balanced out my life. And uh, now I feel like in a in a better place and now I'm back in touch with everyone it's more relaxed everyone's in a I think it was just getting to a head now you're a big hip hop head mm. you love hip hop music what did you think of Remy Ma Shifa uh, I, do you know I, 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 I heard you speak about it and you said it was good for the culture and I think w- when it comes for from you know, if it was me and another singer-songwriter and we were writing songs back and forth, just the very fact that I'm getting inspired to write a song and come back with something, I think, you know, but... You and anybody would be the dumbest beef ever in <laughs> music. Like, that, like, like, who would be for that, Sharon? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like someone might. But, you know, I really, I really, really like Nicki Minaj's music. I really, like, I really, like, every time... Still, every time Monster comes on, I know all the words to it. So I don't I, believe you. Sing, sing it. Uh, bitch, I'm a monster, dirty blood sucker. No, no, that's do Nikki's re- part. Nikki's part. Pull okay. up in a monster. Pull up in a monster automobile gangster with a bad bitch to come from Sri, Sri Lanka. Lanka. Yeah, I'm in a tank of color of Wiggly Wonka. You can be the queen, but watch the queen conquer. First, first things first, first, I eat your brains. I'm gonna start rocking gold, gold teeth, teeth and fangs. Cause that's what a motherfucking monster, monster do. Heal up on the hill with a monster crew. Monster baby, heal with a monster too. Uh, Young money is the rustling in the monster crew. And I'm all, all, all up in the bank with the funny face. face. And if I'm fake, I know it cause my money, money ain't. ain't. Now wait, I ain't no rookie. Yeah, no, I I know rookie, but my bitches, my ways, ten time you pay, fifty k for reverse, no album out. Yeah, my money's so tall that my body gotta climb it, hotter than the Middle East and climb it, climb it, dutty wine it, wine it. Bitch, you gonna live in the sign it, cause these people too one track minded. Now really, really, I don't give a f u c k. Forget the fuck nigga, cause she's fake. Eating cheesecake. Uh, thick wit, thick fast, making things fast. I blink, dick, 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 dick. This is what you just saw. Look at what you lift off. Ah! I'm a motherfucking monster. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do when you don't know the words. Just do the cadence. Dick, 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 fast, dick, dick, fast. I'm a motherfucking That's monster. All. I do know the words, but you've given me four shots. <laughs> it's okay. It's four okay. Shots. Listen, you talk a lot about self-medicating. Speaking of four shots. Do you do you feel like it's self medicating? No, just... it's a different culture in England. We just, like you got you guys literally wake up and drink in the morning. We drink to be sociable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a different thing. So we're the ones with the problem is what you're I'm saying. I'm drinking. <laughs> no, I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking. I'm I'm drinking because the last time I was on here, you offered me a drink and we had it and it was fun. Right. It yeah, was, yeah. It's it's an enjoyable experience. If I was just here with a fucking full glass of whiskey drinking it on my own, you guys would be like. Yeah, he has a problem. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean, you guys, you guys are at exactly the same level as me right now, and we're having a decent interview. We're smiling, we're laughing. Yeah. That's what that's what it's about. It's about I feel having like fun. It's, it's funner when it is on occasion because I don't drink like that, like I used to. So why are you the first one to offer a shot? 
because <laughs> I listen to your music and you sound like an alcoholic. So I, didn't feel like, <laughs> so, so I feel like I just wanted to share some of the liquor we have. Got, you know? Yeah. Now, well, yeah. It's all like all the bottles look really, really fucking fancy and yeah, weird. Lot, and most of it is rap stuff. Like you got E40s. Now tell back me, there. tell me about Hennessy because I've, I've, I spoke. That, so the UK rapper I, uh, I said about last time, Stormzy. Stormzy. I had a, Stormzy. I had I had a long I'm... chat with him about Hennessy because he mm. loves Cavossier and Hennessy. I like Remy. My grandfather drunk Cavossier and Hennessy. Mm. When did an old man drink become such a like youth culture man. first of all Hennessy I don't really drink Hennessy because it makes me shit it's like, <laughs> like the, it me but I'm gonna tell you something about that cognac though Ed. drink some cognac and then have sex with your woman Different type of dick. I have the same thing with vodka. vodka. <laughs> my, da- my dad will watch this, you know. My dad well, will watch this. Your, your yeah. dad probably is, drinks vodka. And, your dad's and... sitting there drinking with cognac, saying, "Yeah, he's right." We <laughs> 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 stop. <laughs> drink. I'm telling you, next time you're with your woman, drink some cognac. How much cognac, though? You ever heard plies and plies say, "I don't know why, but that Remy turns me to a whore." <laughs> Cognac, baby. Vodka does. How same much thing. though? Is it like a couple? Because I mean, like, because like whiskey gets to a point where it's like. I give me the little stiffer. What's them things called? The stiffer. The stiffer. The stiffer. You get stiffer drinking stiffer. No. What's it called? What's the little glass called? That's what it's called. I don't know. I don't know. What the little stiffler. About. You know the the gla- okay. whatever. All I right. give me the little glass <laughs> and I drink about three of those in a cigar. I'm good. See cigars. I had. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna be a dickhead and name 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 drop. But the one time like I properly hung out with Jay Z, mm-hmm. I thought when in Rome and he's drinking like really fancy whiskey and he's got a really nice cigar and I was like yeah. So I, I got the whiskey and the first thing I did. In my mind, it's what you do. I grabbed an ice cube and put it in the whiskey, and all the table, all the people on the table around me were like, <gasps> "Rookie!" And I was like, "Oh!" And then I had the cigar, and for like two minutes, was like, "I need to try and act like I'm enjoying this." Right. And then I just didn't, and put it out, and then rolled the cigarette, and then and then started smoking. You and again, a bag. but yeah, but the, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! But the cigar, I, d- I think I think the cigar was something that you shouldn't like. Yeah, no, stub out and, and, and why didn't you just ask him? Ask him how to properly smoke. No, because it. No, I know how to properly smoke. I just okay. don't enjoy cigars, yeah, and it was uh, uh, yeah, it was just one of those situations where it was like a. I woke up the next morning and had the fear again. And you're like, oh fuck, oh. I've ruined some really good whiskey. Now yeah. let's talk about the record Dive, man. That's one of my favorite records on the album. What's it called? Dive. 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 Did you really give your girl that kind of ultimatum, not to call you baby unless she means it? Did you <laughs> Did you really tell her not to play with your heart? No, like most most likely most of my songs, I never actually say the way that I like. I'm not a like hugely emotional person. I think mm. my emotional side comes out through music. I'm very mm. like, I'm quite an awkward human being. Like I don't really address issues when they come up, and that's why songs exist. I guess I don't that's... think you're awkward though because you address the fact that you're awkward. Like you embrace it. <laughs> I think people become awkward when they're awkward and they try to be something that they're not. Right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, I think you know that's the uh, all of my all of my English mates are, are always ask me about this show and and whether usually whether you've gone in on me hard because I don't think do you, I mean do you like anyone? I do. I like, like you. you. Yeah, I like well, people. That's, I know. That's the thing. Nobody know, ever gives me props but, for people I celebrate. But but what I say is uh is I think the reason that we get on is I don't come in here with any false pretenses. I come in here being right. that's it. as normal as possible. Yeah. Whose body caused you to write shape on shape of you? The shape of you. Uh I don't know really. It was uh I, I originally started it. I'd finished my album and I went in to write like a bunch of songs for, for other artists and I went in the studio that morning. I was like, I really want to write a song for Rihanna. That's why the Marimba comes in and it sounds a bit Caribbean. Because okay. I was like, I oh. want to do a Rihanna oh, okay. tune and uh So Rihanna's body. <laughs> but I did a uh, you know, the chorus the, the chorus originally was done and that was meant to be the one that we were going to send off and then I did uh, the lyrics for the verse and I said uh, put Van the Man on the jukebox Van Morrison and I was like I don't know if I hope Rihanna would put Van the Man on the jukebox but I don't know if that's necessarily a lyric that she would sing so then it ended up being one so I'm, Rihanna, I'm really so, drunk now by the way hold on, really by drunk. the way really you drunk. wrote Shape of You for Rihanna uh, yeah, I did start writing it. But well, actually, Rihanna's I, got a nice I, body. I started the um, the the Bieber song that I eventually finished, the Love Yourself. I originally started that. That's with, an amazing song. So you orig- award for that too. That's I, an amazing. Song. I originally started that off with Rihanna in mind because I thought it'd be amazing to hear Rihanna go, "If you like the way you look that much, go fuck yourself." Like because mm. it would be she- masturbation. <laughs> But he wasn't talking about masturbation. <laughs> He's drunk too. He's just as drunk as you are. Hey, I got it right here. I got what you want. What you want? The whiskey? No, we have no, that's, that's not fake. real. That's, that's not fake. real. That's, that's not fake. real. No, no that's fake. Yeah. Okay. You really want the honey? Go look in the back, Taylor. See if you got honey. What you got? Oh, oh, De Leon. Okay, you haven't even opened this. Oh. You really aren't. You re- you really aren't about that life. No, I haven't. Like you're right. Here you go. 
My goodness. Wow. So you, have, you know what else I like? Have I you like. guys have you guys got any work after this or are you going home? No, I You're actually going don't. Because I've been in LA for the past two days. I'm good today. I actually plan to go see Logan tonight. I got to do a little work. Oh, the, mate, that Logan movie you looks... You seen it? No, but it looks great. It looks dope. You know I love Wolverine. Yeah. I got him tattooed, tattooed on my arm. On his have you? Arm. Yeah, look. It looks like it's a horrible tattoo. It's though. terrible. I got this when I was 18. It's horrible. <laughs> well, I'm from in South Carolina. They didn't have tattoo artists. We could tell. So. Oh, like legit Logan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like legit. Yeah. Not, 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 not like X-Men Marvel. Not, not Marvel. X-Men TV. Marvel. Right. No, this is Wolverine from the comic books. Legit. Well, yeah. he says it's Wolverine. De Leon. Listen. What, who are your competition right now? Before you said it was John Mayer, Usher. What's your competition now? Uh, I think, do you know what? I said, I, I've I've been misquoted this in so so many articles because so many people, when I said I would like to emulate Adele's success, go, oh, he thinks he's bigger than Adele. I don't. I just think every single artist should have Adele as their benchmark. You should, exactly. you should literally reach for the top, and if you get halfway no, there... No, Ed. Beyonce is the, is the bar. No, sales-wise. Okay. Sales-wise. Right. Sales-wise. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, but no, but I. How you get a glass cup now? Where you get that? I didn't want to mix it with all the cognac. Give me some of that. Give me that. Yeah, I need this. All right, here we go. No, but you know, Beyonce's Beyonce's a weird one, man. Because I've I I have got to perform with her twice and have never ever been in the presence of something that talented and amazing. And you just kind of sit there and you're grateful to stand next to her on TV because it makes you look so much better. You're just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like but it's a different thing like when I went to when we did the uh, we played Drunk in Love together at Central Park and I went to rehearse with her the the day before and I walked in and she was rehearsing with, with, with all the dancers and you kind of see her do all these dance routines and then she sits down and it's just me and a guitar kind of one on one like this and I've never ever heard a voice like that that just makes you go Every single time she sings, it's it's the most wow. incredible, amazing thing. Very humble soul, too. Beyonce is the type of person that'll walk in the room and be like, hi, I'm Beyonce. And you'd be like, duh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Why you break that whole thing? Okay. <clears throat> you know what else I like? I like how you hating on new man. Like you what? Because that's the kind of hate that I would throw. Uh, what you mean? Because he's talking about his girl, and this girl got a new man, and he's like, he's got tribal tats. He don't even know what they mean. It was, you know, he wears shades in the club in the winter, in the I'm nighttime. That, I'm that type of hater. Oh, well, that well that was, I was playing Proud Galleries in Camden uh, for a hip-hop night, and there was a, I had a guitar to sound check, and there was a rapper that was coming on stage to sound check before me. And we had like, <laughs> we had like five, we had like five minutes to sound check. And it was in October. It wasn't winter. It was in October in Camden in London at like seven o'clock at night. And he was like on stage. Can you turn my mic up, please? Can you turn my mic down, please? Can you turn my mic up, please? For like 10 minutes. And I was like, dude, let me sound check. Let me. But he was wearing sunglasses. So that's where that line came. Was he, he, was he actually smashing your girl? Or you did something you observed? No. Do you know what? That that song is actually not about anyone. I was in the studio. Do you know Jesse Ware? The singer mm-hmm. Je- Jesse uh-uh. Wett, fantastic, fantastic singer. You'd love her. But we we were, we were in the studio together, and I said I wanted to write the fuckboy anthem. The fuckboy you know, anthem? Fuck, I wanted to pick every single point that you can find about a fuckboy. So the fir- first line is he f- spends 500 pounds on jeans. He goes to the gym at least six times a week. He wears boat shoes with no socks on his feet. Yep. I hear he's on a new diet and watches what he eats. He's got his eyebrows plucked, his arsehole bleached. He owns every single... <laughs> eyebrows owned, plucked, asshole bleached. He owns every single ministry CD. Ministry's a, uh, uh, a label in England called Ministry of Sound, which I, I really get, get on with them, but they make like pumping dance, like... <laughs> and so people will play them in the Vauxhall courses. Uh, owns every single ministry CD, tribal tattoos, and doesn't know what it means. Like that kind of thing. Wears sunglasses indoors at winter at night time. Sounds like a fuck boy to me. And Definitely. then there's there's a, there's a line where I say uh, uh, he drinks beer and has a six pack, and I'm kind of jealous. Because have you ever met like I have a mate that just eats pizza and drinks beer all day and is just like ripped like an Armani model. And then there's me kind of like having a wobble on. Right. Yeah. Who was the rapper? The rapper. Yeah. That the rapper that was in the sound check. Oh mate, I. I have no idea. Actually, I do remember that show though, because I was on the flyer, and there was like seventeen people on the flyer. You know those th- those kind of shows, yeah. and I was down as Ed Shearmington. Ed Shearmington. I was like, <laughs> he couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even get my name right. Well, so you, Jesse, you, you you admitted to Jesse ghostwriting. Like that's not a problem for you. you not ghostwriting. No, I wrote it with it. Oh, you I wrote, wrote it. With it. it. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, mate. I've not made it based on my looks. I can write songs. <laughs> that, <laughs> Ed, 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 Ed. Everybody in this room is aware you're only here because of talent. Thank you. Okay. No, yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah, no, but I'm yeah, saying yeah, like yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have or need a ghostwriter yeah. at, at all. But no, me, me and I, I work a lot with artists. I, I was working on Jesse's album, and we did a song for mine as well. I love collaboration, but no, she definitely didn't ghostwrite for me. Now you, you have your guitar with you. Yeah. 
Now, now, um, I don't know, but I don't know what you want to hear. Do you want to hear a song? Do you want to hear a I rap? Hear like, hip -hop, bro. You want to hear hip hop? The reason I want to hear hip hop because this is a hip hop station, and I don't think people know how diverse you are. All right, um, I brought yeah. it in because well, I, I always see you guys having quite heated interviews, mm -hmm. and then what's your favorite heated interview you've seen? Uh, blimey, I just love the Khaled one. <laughs> I don't, do <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that. Heated. Let me think. Did you I like Birdman? Do you know, but I, I like the song he brought out. I like the song. Put some he, respect on my name. I like the fact that he took the interview, made it into a t-shirt, and made it into a song. As he should have. Yeah. Because yeah. I, think, I think you even said that afterwards, didn't you? You said he should be making a song. Uh, he should be making tons of money and a song. Now listen, you said your father. Oh, what we got. Oh. What you about to play? Some Kodak Black? <laughs> Who's your favorite rapper at the moment, by the way? Uh, I, do you know what? I always, always go back to J. Cole recently. Always. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. My, mine is Big Sean. I saw you take a picture with him at the iHeart. Yeah, Big Sean is dope. Yeah, Big Sean is really great as well. Big Sean, I, see, I first met Big Sean 2010. I did a song with No ID for my first record. And uh, I remember walking in the studio and seeing this guy come in with like loads of chains. And I was like, wow, who's he? And it turned out it was... Big Sean, this was like, before, I think he just signed to, he signed to Kanye. Right? Kanye, Kanye, yeah. yep. Kanye, not Kanye. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> it's the English language, I'm just gonna say He had that. five <laughs> shots. <laughs> I think Big Sean's the best rapper out right now. Yeah? Right, like right yeah, now, at this moment. I would, I would probably, I'd probably agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd probably agree with you. Um, there's also a lot of UK talent around. Why don't you get to Stormzy, Stormzy, Stormzy on here? We need oh, to get Stormzy on. I want Stormzy on. Stormzy. I do want See, Stormzy I spoke. On. I spoke to Stormzy about about uh, about going on here. I think he wants to like make a dent in the US first. I think I think he's going to come over here. I think he has stuff. though. I know, but I think he wants to come over here and probably dent it. Okay. I, I literally had one of my homeboys yesterday recommend me Stormzy. My dude Ja, Ja from Boston. Did, did you have you seen what he did in the UK? Yes. Like independent. No, no, he does like no label. Man. Seventy thousand copies. That's number seventy. One. That's crazy, seventy. Yeah. That's like that's like going gold in a week. Really? With no label. So he can have no sex label. with any woman in the UK right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, but he's he, he does have a lovely girlfriend. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What are we playing? Are you just drunk? <laughs> Both. Both? What? I just want to see where you're going with it. I was born inside a small town, I lost that state of mind Learned to sing inside the Lord's house but stopped the age of nine I forget when I get awards now, the wave I had to ride The paving stones I played upon that kept me on the grind So blame it on the pain that blessed me with the life Friends and family filled with envy when they should be filled with pride And when the world's against me is when I really come alive And every day that Satan tempts me I try to take it in my stride You know that I've got whiskey with white lies and smoke in my lungs I think life has got to the point I know without it's no fun I need to get in the right mind and clear myself up But said I look in the mirror questioning what I've become Guess it's a stereotypical day for someone like me without a nine to five job or a uni degree to be caught up in the trappings of the industry show me the locked doors i find another use for the key and you'll see i'm well aware of certain things that will destroy a man like me but with that said give me one more aye, aye. another one to take the sting away i am happy on my own so here i'll stay Save your love in arms for a rainy day And I'll find comfort in my pain Razor I used to think that nothing could be better than touring the world my songs I chased the picture perfect life, I think they painted it wrong I think the money is the root of all evil and famous hell Relationships and hearts you fit, they break as well And ain't nobody wanna see you down in the dumps Because you're living your dream, man, this shit should be fun Please know that I'm not trying to preach like I'm Reverend Run Beg you don't be disappointed with the man I've become Conversations with my father on the A14 Age 12, telling me I gotta chase those dreams Now I'm playing for the people, dad, and they know me With my beat and small guitar, wearing the same old jeans Wembley Stadium crowds, 240,000 I may have grown up, but I hope that Damien's proud And to the next generation, inspiration's allowed The world may be filled with hate, but keep erasing it now Somehow I'm well aware of certain things That will befall a man like me But with that said, give me one more aye, aye. Okay. Another one to take the sting away I am happy on my own, so here I stay Save your loving arms for a rainy day And I'll find comfort in my pain, Razor And I'll find comfort in my pain, Razor And I'll find comfort in my pain, Razor I woke up this morning looking in the mirror Thinking to myself that I should probably be thinner 
The industry told me to look like them But I found my happiness in fried food for my dinner I wish that she could have been my first time And I wish that I never took that first line And I wish that every word in this verse rhyme But forgive me if it doesn't I wish that I could make peace with my older cousin Wish she didn't think that it was me when it wasn't Wish I didn't love it when I'm high And my face feels buzzing and taste stays underneath my tongue and Wish that I had known what to do as a young and Wish I hadn't dropped out of school and missed every single party But that hardly matters now, man, does it? Wish I had an answer to everything but fuck it Wish creating art didn't come with the budget But while we're on the subject I wish my private life would have never gone public That's the sacrifice that we make Spending my whole time high Wishing life away Singing this is how we're living down here Sitting on the edge looking out without fear Yeah we got drama but you know we don't care I want to see you sing it Put your hands in the air One wish I'm singing this is how we're living down here Sitting on the edge looking out without fear Yeah we got drama but you know we don't care I want to see you sing it Put your hands in the air One wish I wish my family and friends they stay healthy I wish that love was a currency and the whole world was wealthy I find myself late night wishing on a star Every day I wish I'd never broken her heart <laughs> And I wish I'd never went through Every woman that I love look up my life and what it's come to I wish I wasn't the role model you'd look up to If I told my fans the things I did then they say fuck you I wish I was home more I wish my team could see the kids on their birthdays but you're not on tour Home more Home more Whoa! What? Whoa! Bro! Hold on! Whoa! No! Hey, hey, hey. Three, two, one, and. I wish it was home more. I wish my team could see the kids on their birthdays, but yo, we're on tour. I wish I'd grow more. Wish I told more people that I love them, but it's in the music that I'm known for. I wish he never got cancer. And if I smoke a pack a day, well, does that make me a wanker? Well, yes, I guess it does. And we're still stressing, cuz. Every day the same things get the best of us. You're losing my balance on a razor bay, spending my whole time high, wishing life away. Singing, this is how we're living down here. Sitting on the edge, looking out without fear. Yeah, we got drama, but you know we don't care. I want to see you sing it, put your hands in the air. One wish, I'm Singing, this is how we're living down here. Sitting on the edge, looking out without fear. Yeah, we got drama, but you know we don't care. I wanna see you sing it. Put your hands in the air. One wish. I'm using jumpers for goalposts, cigarettes for throat coat. Mum saying don't smoke, though I don't listen. I got love for a ghost note. Shows on the Gold Coast. People that I don't know share the same vision. I find truth in the hard times and words that aren't mine. Trying to find a love with a compatible star sign. Sometimes I can't write. Sentences can't rhyme. Staring at my notepad quick. I'm trying to find mine. Shit. Quick before I hit it again. Surrounded in the industry by all these ignorant. Men. Who knew that I'd be paid just to pick up a pen? Let me hit the studio and we can rip it again. I'm a competitive dick with an adrenaline kick. My daddy told me work hard and you can never be shit. I've seen all my heroes dethroned except my dad. Sat back and reminiscing about the times we had. One wish. Woo! That was a race that, of the extended version. That boy good. That, right? that, that was a race of the extended version. I only got a couple more questions. You talked about your dad just now. You said your father, on one of the records, you said wow. your father told you not to get involved with politics. Religion or other, other people's, people's causes. causes. Yeah. Quarrels, yeah. Quarrels. No, not, not, not causes. Do you know what? My dad said getting into the industry, he said the, the, th the three things that you should keep to yourself that you should always remain really passionate about are mm -hmm. religion, politics, politics, and who's the best MC, Biggie Small or Tupac? Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. I would always go bigger over that. Always. Me wow. too. Lyrically. Always. Lyric lyrically, I'm lyric with you. Lyrically, lyrically, absolutely. Lyrically, absolutely. Lyrically, but what but what they stand for, probably, probably Tupac. Yep. Yeah. Probably Tupac. But no, I, so for me, like... I, I really keep my religion to myself. I keep my political issues to myself. I obviously have strong feelings about both, um, but it's not its not for me to tell people what to do and what to think. You, know? you express people, them a little bit. People can make those decisions for themselves. You express them a little bit on the album, though, um, and it's, it's something I feel, too. You say you think about the state of the world, and you said because you said we can change the world with love, understanding, and positivity. Yeah, that's and I like, really feel like it's that simple. I just, think, I just think putting up barriers in between anything, you know, you just, just like... We should we should all get on. We get so much achieved. Right. If like if I'm friends with you, we can sort out something together and get to the next level. If I'm friends with you, we can sort out something. Like it it's not it shouldn't it shouldn't be about race, culture, country. It's just we should all as a globe be getting together, breaking down barriers and helping the globe. I just yeah, it's a, I, I agree with you 100. percent The only problem is people will look at this and say like, well, Ed, you're white and you're rich, so you can say that. Yeah, no, but I I find my own way way to give back, Absolutely. and I just don't necessarily shout about it. I don't feel like I need to shout about the charities that I help or the people that I give back to or the or the causes that you know I promote. It's just a it's just a thing that I do personally. I know in my head that I'm doing it, and I think that if anyone picks faults in it, all they have to do is Google something and research it. It's not you don't you don't have to shout about things for people to know that you're doing good things. Right. Absolutely. You know?
Come on, let's finish. You, you took your shot. I poured you another shot of Darion. Well, we appreciate Come you on, for man. joining us. At, One more you. sting. You One are, more sting. Uh, last I fuck with that, Sharon. We appreciate you. And Thanks so you much for having through, me man. back on. I want. I, def I definitely want to come back and do it every single time. Even even Anytime. if I have to do fifteen interviews to get. That's all I ask you to do. <laughs> when you're talking to somebody <laughs> later today and you're just running your mouth and your PR is like. Just remember who got you drunk to be able to say all of this shit. Charlemagne okay. the guy. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let's say Charlemagne. Oh, and, and, and you know what? Club. Do you know what? I, d I have I have this. I get, I get in and I'm I'm mad jet like from somewhere and I'll put on all the donkey of the days that there you do you know. and just have them rolling through yeah, on, we'll on we'll YouTube. And I've noticed my voice is in is in the beginning yeah. saying who's donkey of the day today? Goes, well, Ed. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We don't know if he's going to try to collect royalties, so let's not tell him that's his voice. Okay, okay. Allegedly, I don't need to, mate, somebody I... who sounds like Ed Sheeran. Wait, should, can, I, can I do it in, a, in an American accent? Yes, It'd be Ned sure. Sheeran. Who's donkey of the day today? <laughs> 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 you're, de you're definitely going to use that. <laughs> We're definitely going to use that. <laughs> so there you have it. It's Ed Sheeran. It's the Breakfast Club. You're definitely going to use Thank that. Thank you for joining us, man. <laughs> Thank you. I will, see, I will see you next time. Good morning. <laughs> The Breakfast Club, every weekday morning. Tune in.